first spiritual law states you are living in the feeling of thought in the moment. That is the first spiritual law. And almost every time I explain this to Muslims, they're like, yeah, so what? I'm like, it's the insight generator. They're like, okay, but what's that got to do with Islam? You know, what's that got to do with life? Yeah, so what? So feeling comes from thought. Yeah. Okay, but what, what's that got to do with my problem? I can guarantee you there is not a single person in this room or watching at home who's the greatest problem and challenge in their life and the greatest goal they want to achieve that they're feeling insecure about not achieving. There is not a single person watching this show whose problem wouldn't be solved if they actually understood that statement. Okay. Is that going to happen? Here's how. The first spiritual law, actually, here's the thing. We could do a seven-hour training just on this. The other seven spiritual laws are only possible, relevant, important because of this. In fact, the other laws are implications for this, of this. The fact that this is true means all of that other stuff is true. If you find one exception to this, I'm, a, I'm quitting as the Quran coach. If you find one exception to this, the entire instant Islam thing goes out the window, the entire Quran coaching thing goes out the window. If this isn't true, I'm out of business. And I would love to discover that because whatever the next truth is, it's got to be better and bigger. It's like more amazing. But so far, this is the bit. Out of 10 years studying personal development and out of 10 years studying the Quran, the moment I got this, was the moment it was like, now the Quran is my personal development manual. Before it wasn't. This is the difference between reading the Quran for information and reading the Quran for insight. This is what lets the Quran pull the wisdom out of you. There's before and after, and it's clear as day. This is what's gonna connect up everything you already know about Islam to all of the actual challenges in your life. Every challenge you have in your life, if you could see the truth of this in the challenge, the challenge would disappear. It would disappear. Your perspective would be deeper and it would come from a deeper level of consciousness. The implications of this truth are manifold and it's almost easier to understand the implications than it is to understand this, <laughs> right? So right now, before I continue, what does that actually mean? Like, does that make sense to you? You're living, like, what does this mean? You're living in the feeling of thought in the moment. And you notice that not by accident, I've written thought in all caps. Because to understand this statement, you need to understand what thought itself is. Think about the claims I'm staking here. I'm saying you would constantly be living in a state of dhikr and ihsan but for your misunderstanding of this statement or the fact that up until now in your life you haven't understood this statement because you know it seems random now think about this the whole field of personal development this is what allows me to go through personal development teachings and be like that's true that's true that's false that's true that's true uh you're kind of on the right lines but no <laughs> That's the discriminator. And it's the simplest thing in the world. Feeling comes from thought. You know, you're like, okay, what's that got to do with it? So what? Of course feeling comes from thought. Everybody knows that. Does everybody here get that? See, I'm actually, I'm not just saying that feeling comes from thought. I'm saying that feeling and thought are two sides of the same coin. There's no such thing as a feeling without thought. And there's no such thing as thought without feeling. The only source of feeling is thought. There is nothing else in the world 
that causes feeling. There's no such thing as a feeling without a thought. If I repeat myself, it's because my aim is not to give you information. It's for you to slow down and see the truth of this. Here's what I want everyone to reflect on right now that's to do with thought in the moment. A hundred percent of everything you're experiencing right now in this moment is being generated by your mind. Everything you can see in the room right now, the image that you're seeing is coming from your mind. not from the room itself. Now that might sound like a pointless distinction, but it is the most important distinction in the whole field of personal development and spirituality. 100% of everything you're experiencing, every time I realize this, it blows my freaking mind. This image that I'm seeing right now is coming to me from my mind. Now most, like, and it would make sense to me if you didn't get that, but let me explain how this works. Put your hand up if you've ever seen a movie called Inception. Great movie, right? Anybody not like Inception? Everybody likes that movie, it's amazing. In Inception, he says, what happens in a dream world? And there's actually a scene where this happens exactly. He's like, what happens in a dream world? In a dream world, your mind creates the world Right? When you're in a dream world, most of the time, unless you're having a lucid dream, most of the time you don't realize you're in a dream world. You're just, you're playing a part, you're a character, the you, and then there's the rest of the world around you. Would anybody here say that that is not being generated by your mind? Anybody here believe that that's the real world and we're living in the dream world right now? <laughs> okay. Um, what happens in a dream? Your mind creates your entire reality. Everything you're aware of in the dream is being created by your mind. And then the little you who's in the dream is perceiving that reality so quickly. So you're perceiving that reality so quickly that you don't realize you just created it. That's exactly what's happening right now. Your mind is generating everything you see right now, and then you're perceiving it, and it's happening so quickly you don't realize that you're doing it. The only difference between being awake and being asleep is that when you're awake, information's coming to you through, through your five senses. When you're asleep, it's not. What if all of the worst things that are happening and have ever happened in your life, you could just wake up from? That's closer to reality. Than, what you've, than the model you've been using so far. The model most people are using is, what I see is what there is, right? That's it, I'm seeing the chair, the chair is there, stuff like that. How it's actually working is everything you're perceiving right now, your mind is generating that image, partially based on the information coming to you from your five senses, partially, right? People in NLP go a lot into like how you de delete and distort information, all that kind of stuff. The amount of information coming to you is millions of times more than your five senses have the ability to take in. It's just fact, right? So you take in a tiny bit of the information and then it goes into your brain. That information goes into your brain. Your brain is just a computer. Your mind then kicks in, acts. Your mind acts to give life to that information. Your mind is a thing, it's not a thing. Your mind is a force that exists that gives reality to your experience. Without your mind, you're not here. We're gonna go a lot deeper into exactly what the mind is, exactly what consciousness is, and exactly what thought is, because you need that to understand. The deeper you get, the deeper you understand the nature of thought, consciousness, and the mind, the deeper you will understand yourself, your reality, and the Qur'an itself. The more superficial your understanding of thought, consciousness, and the mind, the more superficial your understanding of the Qur'an is, despite all the books you've read. Some of the spiritual masters throughout time have had insights about this and written about it. 
And a lot of the time you can read that and not have a clue what they're talking about, get this, and then read it again and be like, 